Hey everyone, the Benjamin here back here doing another video on Sonobus. Uh, a new version came out with some cool new features, so I just wanted to go over some of those things. I want to mainly focus on the standalone program, but these do apply to the plugin in your DAW. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is download the newest version if you don't have it already. Uh, just go to sonobus.net, scroll down to the bottom here, pick your version. At the time I made this video, it's version 1.4.6. Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about now. After you fire that up, you're going to get to this home screen here. Some new things are already kind of on the screen that we're going to go over. The biggest thing is going to be this input mixer. So if you just go ahead and click into there, you're going to see this new little drop down here. Right now you can control the volume of the metronome or the file playback separately, which is new. Again, if you're you know, new to this program, I suggest you go back to some of my other videos where I go over the basics of this interface and the features. So now before you start uh, creating inputs for your you know, vocal mic or your instrument, uh, we have to do a little bit of setup if you haven't already. So go to the Sonobus settings. Uh, make sure you have your interface selected and then you'll be able to pick what inputs from your device are available inside of Sonobus. Now, my interface has a lot of different inputs so I don't have to enable all of them. Right now I just have the first six enabled. Uh, as well as the outputs, I have the first six outputs available. So if you're doing something larger like a full drum set and you want to have control of that independently inside of Sonobus, you will have to enable all your, you know, all your channels that have microphones on them, basically. And then once that's set up, uh, you go back to your input mixer here, and then this little plus sign. And so here's how you can arrange your, your inputs. So say you're going to have all mono signals, you know, a vocal mic, a guitar, any other type of mono source, you just make an input for that. So right now I have just one channel set up, and that's actually the microphone I'm speaking in right now. So that's channel one. What you can do though on the left here is actually choose which input that's going to be assigned to there. So if you have something different on your interface, you can pick that, which is nice. This is a new new feature. So input one is what I'm gonna use. If you do click this change layout button, you can bring it back to choose like a stereo channel. If you want your one and two input, say you're doing you know some kind of keyboard that's stereo, you'd wanna choose maybe a stereo source. Again, I'm gonna stick to mono. So you can keep adding. Uh, you can even do like a, a six channel source. So say you have some kind of weird setup where you're doing surround sound uh, and you wanna send a six channel group, you can do it that way. Most scenarios you're probably gonna run into, you're gonna just be sticking to mono or stereo channels. So the next thing we're gonna talk about, you can actually label it here. Uh, and what's nice is if you do send these as different inputs, uh, the receiving end is going to get these same names and so they can do their own mix. Uh, we'll go over that in a second. Your volume that's going to be going to everybody will be here. You're going to have effects you can put on. You can put compressor, noise gate, uh, this EQ, and there's even a uh, an input reverb send. So what it says here, the input reverb settings can be edited at the top of the input mixer. So let's go ahead and open that reverb. So what this input reverb does is actually apply reverb to your signal before it sends to everybody else. So if you wanted reverb on your guitar so everyone can kind of hear it that way, this is where you would set that. Otherwise, you'd use this other effects reverb down here, uh, which we'll go over to when we get over here. Uh, the monitoring knob is going to be how you hear your signal to your headphones, you know, assuming you have this monitoring uh, master turned up. You can make your mix of all your different inputs here. Uh, again, that's gonna be just for what you hear. Uh, this volume over here is gonna actually be the send volume to the other people. There's another effects button here where you have the main reverb send, uh, which you have to enable down here, your reverb, for that to be heard. And that's gonna be just for yourself on that one. So another new feature that was added into this version uh, is the additional monitoring delay. It's kind of a strange concept, but the way it works is, let's say that you have a backing track or a drum track that you're going to be playing with everybody else with. You want everyone to hear it 
by nature, that drum beat on your computer is going to be no delay. So you're going to be playing right along with it, which works fine for everyone else to hear because then everything sounds in sync on their end coming from them. But you're going to feel like you're playing, you know, way ahead of everybody else because they're going to be coming back delayed from that drum beat. So to try to compensate for that, you can actually have the drum beat channel have a delay for your headphones. So they're still going to get the signal as fast as possible. But the thought is you're going to have it delayed to your ears, you know, let's say 20 milliseconds so that their 20 millisecond of latency is going to then line up with the drums by the time it hits your ears. The only drawback to this is going to be that you're now going to be playing 20 milliseconds later for them to hear. So you do not want to have too much of a delay on the drum track. I, I would say if you're going to experiment with this, uh, do half the delay that they're going to have. So that way you're kind of in a happy medium between you playing late for them to hear and then you hearing them in time with the drum beat. Uh, it's very helpful, again, in that scenario where a drum beat is on your computer and you just need to delay it to your headphones. Like, you, like you're going to hear it the, the way they're hearing it. It's kind of the concept. So the way that works is you just enable it here. You can manually adjust it or then hit set from peers. Uh, you could do the whole round trip delay. So say, uh, you know, it's 20 milliseconds there and then 20 milliseconds back from them. You could have it do the full 40, 40 seconds. Uh, if you want to, again, experiment with this, you can actually link all your tracks to have the same delay. It's kind of just a cool new experimental feature that I've, I've messed with. All right, so the last thing you have on the far right is just gonna be your output assignment. This is very helpful for people that want to have more control basically of their, you know, different channels externally from their computer. So say you have like a, uh, a mixer and you have all your outputs of your interface hooked up to there, you can assign these inputs to different outputs. This is not just for the input mixer, but also for any of the other people joining your session, you can assign them all to separate outputs. Uh, say that you have you know different headphone mixes or you just handle it externally and where you use outboard gear, uh, you could do some pretty cool stuff with that. Another helpful thing is say you're going to be doing some kind of mixing session remotely, uh, you're working with someone that has a multi-channel, you know, track on their computer and they want to send it through here and you want to mix it. It just allows you to do more things like that. Uh, another feature that was added in is this chat. This chat is nice for sending links to things like lyrics or to chords if you're going to be playing music together. Or say you just want to uh, send a link to your Zoom meeting that you're, you know, a part of. Especially if you're in like the, the public channels, uh, it's it's very helpful for just getting people the things they need or just to say hello. Um, maybe you're having issues with your microphone and people can't hear you. You can type in there or say you're playing an instrument. You don't have a, vo a vocal mic. You could use the chat as well for that. Okay, so let's start adding some new inputs. So let's just do a mono for guitar. Let's do uh, a stereo channel for like a backing drum track. Uh, so yeah, these are all separate inputs that are gonna come in from my interface and now send over to my remote people. Uh, the problem right now is all of this right now that I have mixed, the volumes, the pans, are all gonna just go as a left and right channel to my remote people. And like earlier I was talking about how people would have control over it. Now the way that you would do that is change this up here, this mode up to send multi-channel. So now you'll notice that there's more meters up here. So you'll be able to monitor you know, what you're sending to everybody else. They're gonna get these channels independently with the names, vocal, guitar, drums. Uh, be able to do their own mix, add their own EQ, reverb, whatever they want to do to that, assign them to their outputs, whatnot. So that's really helpful for people. Uh, like for instance, the way that I've been using it is I have a talkback mic, I have my bass independently, and then I also have a electronic drum set here where a drummer comes and plays there. And as well as he has his own talkback mic. So I could actually add another you know, mono send for that. And now my remote people have control over all these different things. Um, I don't have to worry about, you know, their volume because I was running into that issue before this, this feature existed where people are like, well, I'm not hearing your bass, you know, over the drums or, you know, I had to make the mix kind of happen for everybody. Uh, they didn't get their own ability to mix the individual instruments. They could turn up my whole track, you know, versus them. But, um, it just opens up the door to a lot better flexibility for that. 
hopefully that helps you kind of get a feel for some of the new features and be excited about using this. Uh, let me know if there's any questions in the comments below. Definitely like, subscribe to my video, and catch you on the next one.